Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Haribo Archana Archana I have to be able to open the screen. I want to sc screen share. Uh, I'm not the host today. Who's the host? Um, Nima Sati Sutta Prabhu. You should be able to do it now. Okay, yeah. Yes. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvisesha Shunyavari Paschatya Deshatarine Vanchakaupata Rubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so we're speaking on behalf of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of ISKCON, according to his teachings of Bhagavad Gita. Sarvopanishado gavo dogda gopala nandana parta vatsa sadir bhukta dugdam gitam ritam mahat. All the Upanishads are like a cow. And the milker of the cow is Lord Sri Krishna, the son of Nanda. Arjuna is the calf. The beautiful nectar of the Gita is the milk. And the fortunate devotees of fine theistic intel intellect are the drinkers and enjoyers of that milk. Archana? Yes,เอ่อวิปัสสนาเนี่ยก็เหมือนกับเอ่ออุปนิชัดเนี่ยก็เหมือนกับเอ่อวัวนะคะแล้วก็เอ่อนมของวัวคนที่รีดนมวัวเนี
ก็มาก็คือหมายความว่าการทำสมาธิที่องค์อภิวิญญาณว่ามีวิธีการอย่างไรบ้าง However we should understand this process of Astanga Yoga is very very difficult for people in this age เราจะต้องเข้าใจก่อนว่าในวิธีการปฏิบัติอัสทังกโยงาเนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่ยากมากสำหรับบุคคลในกาลียุคนี้ In the Srimad Bhagavatam it's described about a great sage who did the Astanga Yoga process and he practiced it for 10,000 years ได้ให้ตัวอย่างนะคะของฤาษีท่านหนึ่งเนี่ยที่ท่านเนี่ยปฏิบัติอัสทังกโยงาเป็นระยะเวลา 10,000 ปี So that was in the Satya Yuga when people were very peaceful and very pious. But for people in the Kali Yuga, it's very difficult for them to practice this kind of process. We'll see why. We're going to explain the process. Right. Here's text number six. Bandur atma manatasya yenat mat patma man manajata anat manas tu shastrve vartat mai vashastruvat. For him who has conquered the mind, the mind is the best of friends. And for one who has failed to do so, his mind will remain the greatest enemy. สำหรับผู้ที่เอาชนะจิตใจตนเองได้จิตใจเป็นเพื่อนที่ดีที่สุดแต่สำหรับผู้ที่ไม่สามารถเอาชนะจิตใจของตนเองได้จิตใจของเขายังคงเป็นศัตรูที่ร้ายกาจที่สุด So the mind can be the friend, and the same mind can be the enemy. We have to learn how to make the mind a friend. We give the example, just like a knife can be used by the doctor to heal. But the same knife can be used by a criminal to injure and kill people. So by the mind we can elevate ourselves, but by the same mind we can degrade ourselves. So the mind in the yoga practice, mind is very important because we have to be able to control the mind. ในการปฏิบัติโยคะนะคะสิ่งที่สำคัญก็คือจิตใจนั่นเองเราจะต้องมีความสามารถพอในการควบคุมจิตใจของเรา But the mind is not easy to control. We're trying. We have to practice. So, here's here's a a picture. Here's a you can see on the on the left that blue figure. This is a genie, and he's like the mind. And this genie can give us a lot of trouble. And so just like the mind, the mind can be the friend, the mind can be the enemy. This genie can be a friend, it can be the enemy. So the genie, it, it, he, he, he told the owner of this, the person who happened to get hold of this genie, he, the genie told him, he said, you have to keep me busy, you have to give me something to do, otherwise I will have to kill you. ถ้าเกิดว่าเจ้าเนี่ยสามารถให้งานข้าได้เนี่ยงานอะไรท่านก็สามารถทําได้แต่เมื่อไหร่ก็แล้วแต่ถ้าเกิดว่าท่านเนี่ย
So the person who had the genie, he thought, this is good, I've got, a, I've got a lot of things to do, I'll get the genie to do everything. Wash the dishes, do my laundry, clean, them, clean my room. Did it, but the genie did everything very quickly. And so then the owner told the genie, said, now see these bamboo trees out there? Go out there, climb up the bamboo tree. So the genie climbed up to the top and then, and then man said, now come down and then go back up and come down, just keep going up and down. And in this way, whenever, whenever the, the man had something to do, he called the genie, oh, okay, genie, come, do this, go dig the garden, go cut the grass. And when he did everything, okay, now start climbing up and down the bamboo again. So th this is how we have to deal with the mind. We have to keep the mind busy in Krishna's service. And when we finish the service, then we chant Hare Krishna, we take shelter of the Holy Name. And in this way we make the mind, we keep the mind controlled. But if we don't keep the mind engaged, if we don't keep it busy in Krishna consciousness, the mind will be the enemy. Okay, so now we're going ahead. Lord Krishna is going to describe to us text 11 and 12. He's going to tell us what you need to do to practice this Astanga Yoga. So first thing he said, to practice yoga, one should go to a secluded place. It means you don't just sit in the hall, you don't just sit in your room and close the door and close the curtains. You have to go out from the house. Yeah, you go out from the house, you go into the jungle or the mountains somewhere away from the, everyone. And you don't take any phone with you or you don't take anything so that people can communicate and disturb you. So then you have to make a nice seat. You, have, you get kusa grass. You get this special grass called kusha and you put that on the ground and then cover it with a deer skin. So the deer skin gives off a special chemical because you're away in the forest so there will be all kinds of snakes and different reptiles, insects but if you have the deer skin there, they'll keep away. They won't trouble you. Uh, 
Uh, and you can put a, a piece of cloth, soft cloth, on top of the deer skin for your seat. So the seat shouldn't be too high and it shouldn't be too low. And it should be in a sacred place. So then the yogi should then sit on it very firmly. Means you, you sit down, you don't stand up, you sit down and you have to sit sit and with a spe in a special way, sit very straight. And you shouldn't move back and forth, you shouldn't shake, you shouldn't rock. And we should practice yoga to purify the heart. And we can purify the heart with the way we have to do it is by controlling the mind, the senses and activities and fixing the mind on one point. So you can see it's not a very easy thing to do this. Who wants to go away into a secluded place all on their own? And then, and then you have to be willing to sit there. And you don't just sit there for one hour. You have to sit there for a long time. Prabhupada said there are some people who do it. Even today, they go in the Himalayas and they can do it. They, can, they will sit there and they will control their breath and they will be hundreds of years old but they look like young people. So we don't want to waste our time doing this kind of thing. Because there's much quicker ways to, to advance and to purify the heart. But anyway, Krishna described this process. So the next verse, verses 13 to 14, they described that one should, one should, one should, one should hold one's body, neck and head erect in a straight line. <laughs> And you should stare steadily at the tip of the nose. So this way you have to concentrate. You don't move anything. You sit very still and you just look at the tip of your nose. You don't want to close your eyes because if you close your eyes, you may go to sleep. And if, the have the, if we have the eyes too wide open, looking everywhere, we'll get distracted. So you just look at the tip of the nose. And then 
We should not be afraid. We shouldn't be disturbed in the mind. Our mind should be peaceful. And we shouldn't be afraid that, oh, I'm far away from my home and nobody's here, to, I'm all alone. Don't be afraid. And, and you should be you should be accustomed to brahmachari life to practicing celibacy. If one is not practiced celibacy, then it will be difficult to control the mind. And then we should meditate upon Lord Krishna, who is within the heart, as the super soul. And we should make Krishna the goal of life. So this is how you practice this Astanga Yoga. Not very easy things to do. You have to sit straight because if you, if you bend, then the head will go down, then you go to sleep. We see sometimes when we're chanting Hare Krishna, some people have trouble staying awake. They often go to fall asleep. So you want to stay awake, you have to sit, sit straight, keep the head straight, keep the head up, don't let the head go down. And this way then we can concentrate the mind better. So this, the, this is the process. Astanga Yoga, there are eight stages, actually. Begins with, begins with Yam and Niyam. Yam and Niyam means the rules, the things you should do and the things you shouldn't do. Right? Just like we're we are vegetarian, no meat, no intoxication, no illicit sex. This is the, the rules. So, so in Astanga Yoga, they, were, they will also practice these kind of rules. And in Astanga Yoga, they cannot marry. They have to practice Brahmachari. So Yama and Niyama is first, and then after that, then they do the asana. They do the, the different postures to get the body flexible. And then after that, then they do the, the fourth step is pranayama, controlling the breath in the air and controlling the breathing from the from the nose. Breathe in one nostril and then out the other nostril. Mm -hmm. 
So the pranayam, and after pranayam, then there's more all four stages of meditation. First of all, where where they did, you don't think of anything around you. You just become detached from everything. And then turn the consciousness within. And then think of the super soul, the Lord in the heart. And then, then the perfection is samadhi. So you have to be prepared to sit for a long time to come to samadhi. So, we look now, chapter 6, verse 33. Arjuna says, O Madhusudana, which is the name of Krishna, the system of yoga which you have summarized appears impractical and unendurable for me, for the, the, the mind is restless and unsteady. So even 5,000 years ago, when Lord Krishna was speaking this Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, Arjuna said he couldn't do this system of yoga. Yeah, Arjuna said, oh, it's, it's not practical, I just can't do this. And he says, why? He said, because my mind, my mind is restless, my mind is not steady. Arjuna said, it's more difficult for me to control the mind than it is to control the wind. We know how difficult the mind, with the mind, one minute it's here, when we're thinking, you know, we're thinking Bhagavad Gita, next minute we're thinking about my wife or my husband or my children. We're thinking, the mind wanders so fast to so many other places. The mind is thinking, what will I eat before I, for my supper tonight? What should I eat? And the mind is thinking, then, what time, what's on the movies tonight? What's the film tonight on television? Mind is so restless, it's kind of very difficult to keep it steady. So this is Arjuna's reply to Krishna. So now we have how Krishna responds to Arjuna. What does Krishna say? Does Krishna say, oh, it's okay, Arjuna? No. Krishna says, O oh, mighty arm, son of Kunti, it is undoubtedly very difficult to curb the restless mind, but it is possible by suitable practice and by detachment. Krishna, 
โอรสพระนางคุณชีการดัดจิตใจที่ไม่สงบนิ่งเป็นสิ่งที่ยากมากโดยไม่ต้องสงสัยแต่เป็นไปได้ด้วยการฝึกปฏิบัติอย่างถูกต้องเหมาะสมและด้วยการไม่ยึดติ Lord Krishna is very expert in dealing with people, and when he replies to Arjuna, he addresses Arjuna by some very appropriate names. We see Krishna calling Arjuna Mahabaho. Meaning, mighty armed son of Kunti. So Arjuna has strong arms. He was able to fight with Shiva. He's not a weakling. Arjuna, นะคะเป็นยอดนักรบพอเขาเนี่ยมีพลังกำลังที่แข็งแรงมาสามารถแม้แต่จะ And he is the son of Kunti, and Kunti is a great devotee. And so in this way, Lord Krishna is reminding Arjuna that actually he's he's very qualified. He should be able to control his mind. But at the same time, Krishna points out that it's not easy. I know it's going to be difficult. You have to practice. The mind will wander. You have to bring it back. So chanting Hare Krishna mantra is very helpful for us to control the mind. And the other quality which is required to control the mind is detachment. We cannot hold on to the material. We want to control the mind. We want to elevate ourselves to the spiritual or transcendental platform. We have to let go of the material. If we hold on to the material. Then how will we be able to take hold of the spiritual? So, some portion maybe we have somebody's a new devotee. We don't encourage them to give up everything immediately. But gradually, gradually we have to let go of our material attachments. Remember, this is Astanga Yoga. It's very difficult to practice in this Kali Yoga. Okay, going to the next text, number 41. This, because Arjuna, Arjuna is worried that, well, you know, if I try to do this yoga process, it, it sounds difficult. I don't know if I'll be successful. What happens if I don't succeed? Will I lose everything? Arjuna is thinking that you know, if I give up everything material and try for the spiritual, 
And if I fail in trying for the spiritual, then I've lost everything material as well. So Lord Krishna describes here in text 41 about an unsuccessful yogi. It means somebody he's practiced, he, he practiced yoga not for very long. He didn't practice very long. But he somehow, you know, he wasn't successful. He wasn't successful maybe because he had some desires for material enjoyment still. So what happens to him that he, he is described here, the unsuccessful yogi, after many, many years of enjoyment on the planets of the pious living entities, is born into a family of righteous people or into a family of rich aristocracy. So we may think, oh, that sounds nice. Born into a family of rich aristocracy, we'll have a lot of money, live in luxury. Are you born into a family of righteous people, good people, pious people? But before that, after we, after, because we are not successful in yoga, the first thing which happens is we go to the planets of the pious living entities, usually a higher planets like demigods, and you go there and enjoy there for many years. And after you've enjoyed there, then you become tired of all the material enjoyment. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't last forever. You, then you lose your taste for sense gratification, and then you come back to earth. And you're put into a, one of these nice families where you quickly have the opportunity again to take up spiritual culture. So the, this is a person who only practiced for a short time. Now we're going to see somebody who practiced for a long time but still not quite successful. So, described here, text 42, if unsuccessful after long practice of yoga, he takes his birth in a family of transcendentalists who are surely great in wisdom. Certainly such a birth is rare in this world. หรือหากไม่ประสบความสำเร็จหลังจาก
So if you're born in a family of devotees, they're transcendentalists, then from birth you're hearing the holy name, you're tasting prasadam, you're seeing the deities. So these children who are born in devotee families, they're not ordinary souls. We should understand it. Previously, they were yogis, but just not quite perfect. And Srila Prabhupada describes how he and his own spiritual master, they were both born in that kind of family. Of course, they didn't meet till later on, but in their childhood they had that opportunity. They were brought up in the family of devotees. But Prabhupada's guru, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he was the son, seminal son of Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And Prabhupada described about his own father. He said his father was a pure devotee. He worshipped Radha and Krishna deities every day. So when he was a child, his father had him trained to play the Madanga. And at one point the family wanted to send Prabhupada to England to become a lawyer, but his father would not agree. His father said, I don't want my son to become a materialist. And he would always ask guests who came to the house, he said, please bless my son that he will be the devotee of Radharani. So Srila Prabhupada even taught us, he said that, he said even demigods are waiting in line to take birth in the family of devotees in our Krishna conscious movement. It's very rare to be born in a family of devotees. It's such a wonderful opportunity to become perfect in Krishna consciousness. Just like Prabhupada told us, he said, his whole life, he never even drank tea. And one time, when Prabhupada was sick and when he was a young child, the family brought the doctor and the doctor said, you have to give your son chicken soup. And the family, they're pure vegetarian. They never cooked any chicken. They, didn't, they said, no, we cannot. We're vegetarian. And 
พราะว่าเป็นไปไม่ได้หรอกค่ะเพราะว่าที่บ้านไม่เคยทำเนื้อสัตว์เลยแล้วก็กินเจมาตลอดทั้งชีวิต The doctor said if you don't give him chicken soup this boy may die แล้วคุณหมอก็บอกว่าถ้าเกิดว่าเธอไม่ให้ซุปไก่กับเขาเนี่ยเด็กคนนี้จะต้องตายอาจจะตายได้ So mother and father were very afraid So somehow they got some chicken and they cooked it and they made some soup and they tried to feed it. They put one spoonful in the mouth and just Prabhupada, as a young boy, he just he vomited. He, spit, he could not take it. So then, his mother and father understood. No, we cannot give this boy this thing. We will just pray to the Lord to save our child. Okay. So here's the last verse, the final verse of this sixth chapter. Yoginam ma pi sarvesham madgate nantaratmana shradavan bhajate yomam same yukta tamo mata. And of all yogis, the one who, with great faith, who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental loving service to me, he is the most intimately united with me in yoga and is the highest of all. That is my opinion. ตลกสุดท้ายนะคะของบทที่6นี้นะคะได้กล่าวไว้ว่าในบรรดาโยคีทั้งหลายผู้ที่เปรียบไปด้วยความศรัทธามีค่าเป็นสารณะอยู่เสมอและลึกถึงค่าอยู่ภายในใจปฏิบัติรับใช้ค่าด้วยความรักทิพย์โยคีผู้นี้อยู่ร่วมค่าในโยคะและใกล้ชิดที่สุดและเป็นบุคคลสูงสุดนี่คือความคิดเห็นของข้า So from this verse, we should understand that in these first six chapters, Lord Krishna has been describing the yoga ladder. There's a progression of yoga from one level to the other. At the very bottom of the yoga ladder, you have the animal form of life. It's not. It's just not on the yoga ladder at all. It's just animal life or sense gratification. And then for people who are a little material pious, then you have the karma kanda level, where people are doing Vedic rituals to get sense gratification. So that's also material. It's not yet spiritual. But when we start, when karma kanda come becomes karma yoga, that's spiritual. That's on the yoga ladder. And there's different. There's two main levels of karma yoga. One karma yogi is the one who is attached to the results. And the more advanced karma yogi is the one who is not attached to the results. So the nature of the karma yogi is they're attached to working to a particular type of work. They like to do a particular work. They're not, they're not so able. They're not so flexible. They're not just. They're not willing to change. 
And then above the karma yogi is the jnana yogi. Jnana yogi is one who has knowledge, knowledge, transcendental knowledge. We see how Krishna had been giving transcendental knowledge in the fourth chapter. Sometimes people, you know, the karma yogi, he doesn't have a lot of knowledge. He doesn't have knowledge, but if he gets more knowledge, then he can make more advancement. The qualification of the karma yogi is he's detached. Generally, he'll be detached from the results. So, so because he's detached, he will get the mercy, he will, get, he will attract, attract the mercy of a devotee who will give him knowledge. And from that knowledge, he will understand that he's not the body, he's a soul, and then the knowledge will expand further to understand there's also a super soul. And that will lead him to the next stage, which is Dhyana Yoga or Astanga Yoga. He will meditate on the super soul in the heart. And when his meditation is successful, he will realize that he is a servant of the super soul. So from Astanga Yoga, he will go on to Bhakti Yoga. So this is described here in this final verse of the sixth chapter that Bhakti Yoga is the topmost of all the yogas. And, and one, one who is a Bhakti Yogi He's also a karma yogi, he's also a jnana yogi, he's also a dhyana yogi. Right, karma yogi means he's working and detached from the results. So that's a devotee. And he's also a jnana yogi because he knows about the body and the soul and the super soul and the material nature. And he's also a, a dhyana yogi or an astanga yogi because he's always remembering the Lord. He sees the Lord everywhere within all living entities and within the heart of everyone. So this is, then this way the Bhakti Yoga, Bhakti yoga includes all of these other yogas. And Lord Krishna describes the, the nature of this bhakti yoga, bhakti yogi, that he has great faith. Right. 
Right, he has great faith in Lord Krishna. He wants to offer everything to Krishna and remember Krishna. And he thinks of Krishna within himself, in his mind. He's always thinking of Krishna. And he does service for Krishna. By chanting the holy name, sometimes offering candles, offering lights to Krishna. So in this way he is connected to Krishna and he is the topmost of all yogas. And Krishna said this is his opinion. So the, the Bhakti Yogi is very dear to Lord Krishna. Okay. Oh, so here's a little thing. By chanting Hare Krishna mantra constantly, one can fix the mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. Savaimana Krishna Pararavinda Yoy. And in this way, this is from Srimad Bhagavatam 9.4.18. And in this way, achieve the perfection of yoga. Okay, so that's the perfection of yoga. Okay, so now time for questions. Okay, Maharaj, I had a question about um, the verse 6.42. Um, yeah. You mentioned, uh, it's mentioned that, you know, after a long practice of yoga, one takes birth in um, a devotee family, but sometimes we also see the, you know, the kids, the devotee kids are also drifting away. They don't really want to practice Krishna consciousness. So why is that so now? Like, is it personal choice or is some sort of karma? เอ่อคําถามของมาตรีนะคะก็คือถามว่าในสรุปที่ 6.42 it has a lot to do with the home environment what happens at home how much are the parents actually devoted? They have to have the nice, peaceful atmosphere at home. And the children have to see the parents practice. They have to see the parents regularly chanting and worshipping. Just, just like Prabhupada said, every night he would see his father come home and worship his deities. So the children, if they see the parents do these things, if they see the parents have devotion, the children will follow. Mm. 
Sometimes, of course, the parents, you know, they're working, they're off to work all day, they come home and they're tired and they don't do much. The conception of the children is also important that, you know, the child should be conceived in Krishna consciousness and means the parents they should do things like Garbhadan Samskar before conceiving the child. And they should genuinely desire to have a child who will be a devotee of Krishna. They should think that this child will not take birth again. This will be his last birth. And then, and then the, the parents have to make arrangements to help the child to cultivate Krishna consciousness. Just like we said, Prabhupada was learning, he could play Madanga, he learned Madanga so expertly, and his harmonium playing was very expert. And he learned Sanskrit when he was at school, he studied Sanskrit. And then Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, when he was a young child, he'd memorized the whole Bhagavad Gita. In addition, they knew several languages. They knew, as we said, Sanskrit and Bengali and Hindi and English. And of course, for some time, Bhakti Vinod Thakur was living in Puri, so they would know Oriya, they could speak Aristan language. And so the, these languages were all there to help them preaching. So the, to be, uh, you, you, you have to understand also mother and father, they, they should be natural devotees. They should be in Krishna consciousness themselves. They shouldn't just think, yeah, I'm a Hindu, yeah, I'm born a Hindu, and they don't practice anything. Until they came to Krishna consciousness, they never chanted, they weren't even vegetarian before they became in touch with devotees. So Srila Prabhupada said it would take two or three generations before we get some really good devotees. So like that, it takes time to get to produce very nice souls. But the philosophy is that these souls coming in the family of devotees, they're special souls. 
เพราะฉะนั้นก็ต้องใช้เวลานะในการที่จะได้ดวงวิญญาณที่ดีมาแต่ว่าดวงวิญญาณที่ได้มาเกิดในครอบครัวของเซาเนี่ยนั้นถือว่าเป็นดวงวิญญาณผู้โชคดีมาก Any other question? มีคำถามอะไรไหมคะฮาริกิชนักรุมหาราชดาดวัตปนามพิสัชเซฟแม่ฮัมเบิลอบิเซเซสอาจารย์แปลให้หน่อยนะคะพี่มีความสงสัยว่าถ้าเกิดเราปฏิบัติในชีวิตทิพไปอะค่ะเวลาเรากับเราทํางานในโลกวัตถุอะไรเงี้ยบางทีเรามีความอึดอัดที่เราจะต้องพูดคุยกับคนอื่นที่หมายถึงว่าพูดแต่เรื่องผลประโยชน์แล้วก็พูดแต่ในเรื่องราวในโลกวัตถุอะไรเงี้ยค่ะซึ่งมีความอึดอัดใจในหลายๆอย่างอะไรเงี้ยค่ะอยากจะรบกวนมหาราชแนะนำอะค่ะว่าเราจะสามารถปรับตัวยังไงในกระแสที่เราปฏิบัติชีวิตแล้วเรายังต้องทํางานในโลกวัตถุอะขอบคุณค่ะฮาริบิชนา Her question is when she want to become very serious in Krishna consciousness and when she have to work with outsider and the topic that uh, they usually talk is nothing to do with Krishna but it's all about how to gain more material thing which she don't want to be involved much but uh, it's also necessary for her to get along with them for her to survive there so how how can she balance this? Yes, you have to, you have to go along with it. You have to, you know, be something of an actor or actress, and just say, "Oh yes, yes, I agree." You know, and, you know, listen to their material things and and you know, and express some support for them. But in your mind, you should be thinking, "Oh, this is terrible. I don't really agree with this at all." Hmm. เพื่อให้อยู่ได้ในสังคมปัจจุบันนะคะเวลาเราอยู่กับเขาเนี่ยเราก็ต้องบอกว่าเออใช่ใช่เธอฉันเห็นด้วยจริงมากตรงนี้ใช่เลยแต่ในใจนะคะเราก็ต้องคิดอยู่ตลอดว่าเออมันไม่ได้ใช่อะไรขนาดนั้นนะความจริงมันก็เป็นวัตถุอยู่หน้าอะไรอย่างเงี้ย Yeah you just you you we can understand people pretty much you know what they're like and how they're very materially attached and they have their own way of thinking So you don't want to disturb their minds. In Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna also said, "Better don't try to disturb their minds. Just show a good example yourself." อีกอย่างหนึ่งนะคะที่กฤษณาได้สอนไว้ในพระกวัตคีตาก็คือเราอาจจะไม่ต้องไปทบเทียงกับเขาหรือว่าพยายามอธิบายอะไรเขามากแต่ว่าเรานะกลับเป็นตัวอย่างที่ดีให้เขาได้เห็น when they say something you just say oh really oh like that oh my goodness so you know but you don't have to commit yourself บางเวลาเขาพูดอะไรมาเราก็บอกโอ้จริงเหรอเป็นอย่างนั้นเองอ๋อเข้าใจแล้วอะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะแต่ไม่ต้องเอาตัวเองเนี่ยเข้าไปลงไปในเรื่องของเขามากแค่รับรู้ Yes, sometimes we know it's difficult. You have to associate with people who are not devotees. เราก็เข้าใจนะคะว่ามันอาจจะยากเพราะบางครั้งเราต้องคบหาสมาคมกับบุคคลที่ไม่ใช่สาวก So within your mind, you should be thinking, Oh, I'll be so glad I can go home. I can go. And be with my family. I can be at my own home. I can worship Krishna. But when you're with them, you just have to look. You know, oh, hi, yeah, how are you? And uh, be friendly and get along with them. So, you just have to be a bit, a bit of an actress. That's all. And just put on a good show and pretend them, pretend them, pretend to them that you're just like them. But at the same time, 
You're different, very different. Hmm. Any other question? Um, Maharaj, there's a question from um, Sumaduri Mataji. Yeah. So her question is, we see in the scriptures many examples of such great yogis uh, fall down with just one mistake and again take birth in material world. So we are very new students of Bhagavad Gita and Bhakti Yoga and we are still making so many mistakes. So will we be able to achieve perfection in Krishna consciousness?คำถามของมาตรีนะคะก็ถามว่าในอดีตเนี่ยถ้าเราดูประวัติไปในละเวลสามารถเห็นได้ว่ามียกีหลายทั้งเลยที่เอ่อกระทําความผิดเพียงน
ซึ่งอาจจะมีร้านเนี่ยทำความผิดเยอะแยะมากมายมาสามเลยแต่สุดท้ายเนี่ยเขาก็ได้มีโอกาสในการ Antimila was sin was sinful but because he was chanting the holy name he was able to be freed from all of his sins อาจารย์มีร้านะคะเป็นคนที่ทำบาปมากมายเลยแต่ว่าจากการที่เขาเนี่ยสวดภาวนาพระนามนะคะทำให้เขาเนี่ยสามารถเป็นอิสระจากคนบาปของเขาได้ But you've got someone like Daksha. Daksha was offensive. He was offensive to Lord Shiva, so he didn't get perfection. Daksha was also he was a very elevated soul. He was a prajapati, who were the very important people in the universe. But he offended offended Lord Shiva. Daksha, นะคะเป็นประชาปฏิคือเป็นบุคลิกภาพผู้ยิ่งใหญ่ความจริงแต่ว่าเนื่องจากอาบัติที่เขาทำคือเขาทำอาบัติต่อพระศิวะซึ่งเป็นสาวผู้ยิ่งใหญ่เลยทำให้เขาไม่ได้รับความดุ And so he ended up getting the head of a goat, and then with the head of the goat, he it was so disgusted he gave up that life and took birth again. So we don't want to be offensive to anyone. We want to be. We may commit some mistakes. We may make some faults, but. Every day we pray to Krishna by chanting His holy name. And if we continue to practice faithfully, then at the end of our life, Krishna will come into our mind and take us back to Godhead. แล้วเราก็ฝึกปฏิบัติอย่างนี้ไปเรื่อยๆเป็นประจำนะคะแล้วในแล้วในบ้านปลายชีวิตสุดท้ายของเราเนี่ยคริสต์าเนี่ยจะมาปรากฏที่จิตใจของเราเองแล้วจะพาเราไปพาเรากลับบ้านเอ even if we can't remember Krishna but if we follow the four principles and do chanting every day at the end of our life Krishna will come and take us back to God ถึงแม้ว่าเราจะไม่ได้ทำได้ในระดับที่แบบบริสุทธิ์มากเลยนะคะแต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเรานะคะมีความมั่นใจในการที่จะปฏิบัติรักษาสิ่งสี่ข้ออย่างดีแล้วก็สวดมนต์สิบกรอบเป็นประจำสม่ำเสมอเนี่ยในวันสุดท้ายของชีวิตเราเนี่ยคริสต์นาจะทรงมาปรากฏที่จิตใจของเราเองนะให้เราระลึกถึงตรงนะโอเค any question more ตอนเพื่อนจำนวนประมุ่ย have a question Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, Dhanavad Pranam. Hare Krishna, Dhanavad Pranam. Ajay, Nepal Nepali Vara Sochi La. Unse Prabhuji, Ajay. Yo Ali kiti naabu jara, yo cheko chagis ek mane. Hare Krishna. Ajay Prabhuji kono. Ajay cheko chagis ek mane bani. Hani yo asafal yogi, yogi asafal baaye chavani pavitra dhamma gara jo. अनेक बार सब आपने पुण्य भोग करे बच्ची मतलब धर्मान को घर में जन्म लिंचा यानी कि आज तो तो छावनी पवित्र भक्ता को घर में जन्म लिंचा बनी यहाँ छाने तर भक्ता वाला बनी ते ही फिलो सभी लाख सभी भक्ता और बनी असफल बारा तो गरीब पहले तेज ते ही केरे आपने घर में करे केरे आपने पुण्य भोग करे बच्ची um, Maharaj, his question is about uh, the 40, uh, 41 uh, shloka, 6.41. So he just uh, he wants to clarify that it's written that unsuccessful yogis, after many years of enjoyment, they, you know, on the planets, they come back as, you know, um, in the righteous uh, family. But is this applied to the devotee family as well? Like the devotees also, if they're unsuccessful, they'll go, they'll enjoy, and they'll come back as in this planet or it's different with devotees yes it's also for devotees 
if we're not successful, so then we would also, because, why, the point is, why are we not successful? Because we have some material desires, we want to enjoy something. And so it may happen that we go up there to higher planets and we enjoy sense gratification there for a long time. And then you get tired of sense gratification and then you come back here. So yeah, devotee, this is for devotees also. Yeah, we gave the example, Bharat Maharaj, he had been practicing yoga for a long time. Somehow he got distracted and got attached to the deer and that, and he thought of a deer at the time of death, so he had to become a deer for one birth. But then next life he was born in a devotee, a pious Brahmana family. So that's why sometimes people think, they will say, you know, born in a Brahmana family, it should be their last birth, next birth, next birth they should get liberation. But Brahmanas, unfortunately, in Kali Yuga are often very fallen. They don't have much Brahminical qualities. And better than a birth in a Brahmana family is birth in a devotee family. So the position of the Vaishnava is higher than that of the Brahmana. Some Brahmanas are, they're, they're, they may be pundits. But they may not be devotees. They may not. They have no devotion. But as we heard today, at the top of the yoga ladder is devotion, bhakti yoga. Of course, Krishna says, Namo Brahmana Devaya, Go Brahmana Hitaya Cha, Jagatitaya Krishnaya, Govindaya Namunma, that the cows and the Brahmanas are very dear to Lord Krishna. But these Brahmanas mean devotee Brahmanas, not just any Brahmana, but devotee Brahmanas. They have to be devotees, they have to be following the Brahminical culture and also devotees. Mm. Okay, any other question here today? No more questions, yeah? So tomorrow night, there's no class, but tomorrow there will be program from, from other people, right? Is Kavi Chandra Swami going to give class tomorrow? Um, yes, Maharaj. Yes? Yes, Maharaj. Oh. Yes, great. So Kavi Chandra Swami will be giving class tomorrow on a different topic. So. 
you please also take advantage to hear Kavi Chandra Swami speak tomorrow. And I'll be back on Sunday and we'll go ahead to chapter number 7. So we see the first six chapters have been emphasizing karma yoga. Although other yogas were also described, mainly it was karma yoga which was taught. And we will go on, the chapters 7 to 12 next week are all on Bhakti Yoga. And then the last section, chapter 13 to 18, will be on Jnana Yoga. Uh, 16, eh, 16 to 18. 13. And some people think that because Jnana Yoga comes at the end, they think Jnana Yoga must be more important than Bhakti. But that's not right. It's bhakti yoga which is the top. We just heard that the, uh, the highest yogi is the yogi in devotion. And so some people are saying, why does bhakti yoga not come at the end? Why does it come in the middle? So Srila Prabhupada explains, he said, it's just like a sandwich. You get the good thing in the middle. So the Karma Yoga and the Jnana Yoga, they're the coverings of the bhakti. So we'll look forward to going through the Bhakti Yoga section with you all next week. Okay. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Um, so thank you very much, Maharaj. So we end this week's uh, Bhagavad Gita class. We have some announcement regarding the recordings. So all the recorded sessions will be uploaded in our Facebook, uh, Facebook page by tomorrow. So for now, we just have the first chapter uploaded and we have sent the link in the chat. So you all can refer to the chat for the FB link, the recordings of Maharaj. So by tomorrow, we'll upload everything. And we'll resume our seminar on chapter seven from Sunday. So thank you very much, Maharaj. Arsana, maybe you can translate. Yeah. อ่าสําหรับในส่วนของการเอ่อบันทึกนะคะเราจะมีบันทึกย้อนหลังเนี่ยสามารถไปดูได้ที่ Facebook